today what we're going to look at is other kind of problems where the normal distribution that we're given does not have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now the only table that we have is that particular normal distribution. So we have to convert all other normal distributions into this standard normal distribution. And the way we do it is by this formula that you can see on the screen. This is not given to you on the formula sheet, so you have to know it. It's a pretty simple one. To convert an x value from our real life distribution into a z value, we just do this. Subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. So this z value is really telling us how many standard deviations away from the mean our particular z value is. It's really important to draw diagrams for these things. So for the rest of the workbook, you can see I've got the diagrams there for you to fill in. But uh, in the exam, you won't have them there, of course, but I really encourage you to draw the diagram so you can actually visualize the areas. So here we've got a question about the waiting time to order fast food in a restaurant. We've done lots of surveys and we know that it's normally distributed mean 3.5 minutes, standard deviation 0.8 minutes. We've got to work out these probabilities. So X here is our waiting time to order. For our first question, the probability that it's longer than four minutes. Okay. So on the left here, that's the probability we're looking for. The mean's three and a half. We want to work out the probability of getting four and above. Now I'm going to convert this normal distribution into the standard normal distribution using that formula above. X, which in this case is four, minus the mean, 3.5, divided by the standard deviation gives me 0.625. So now this problem is converted into this problem. The probability that z is greater than 0.625. And we know all about z, we've got the tables, we've got the probability. So we go to our tables, we look up 0.625. Remember that's going to give us the value from there all the way down. So one minus that area is going to give us the shaded area that we want, 0.266. Second question, what's the probability that we wait less than two minutes? Okay, draw the diagram, there's 3.5 in the middle, less than 2. You can see our probability down here. Let's change that value of 2 into a z value. So 2 minus the mean over the standard deviation, that z value is negative 1.875. And that, that, that makes sense. You can see it's to the left of 0. And that's to the left-hand side here. So this area and this area are exactly the same thing. So can't look up negative 1.875 in my tables because it's only positive. So what I do is I look up positive 1.875, look up that value which gives me from there all the way down and say 1 minus that which will give me the area above positive 1.875 which is the same as this area here. So 0 0.0303. Give your answer as probability if you want to write it as a percentage or think of it as a percentage that's just over 3% chance. Last example, very similar. We're looking for the probability of waiting between 2.8 and 5.2 minutes. Here I've converted both of those x values into z values. You can see I've done it in this place here. You can do it separately. And we've got a negative and a positive. I'll show you how to deal with that in the last video, how to deal with a negative z value and a positive z value. I've done it using method one, if you like. Final answer, 0.7924. I love this little movie. It's uh, a little bit hard to see, but what you've got here is um, lots of grains of sand up here. You've got some little pegs here that are kind of going to randomly distribute the grains of sand. So as the sand falls down, it kind of bounces off these pegs randomly. And let's see what happens. A perfect normal distribution, as you can see. So let's watch it again. So as the sand comes through, you can see most of them end up in the middle. Sometimes just from random bounces, they end up right on the end, but not very many of them. Some end up down the bottom here, but not very many, the majority in the center. This is for those people that have a Casio FX991ES or a similar model. Working out these probabilities or these Z values on your calculator is really easy and you don't even need the tables because your calculator has all these Z values in them. So if you do have one of these calculators, check this out. Um, you have to be in stat mode first, and then you go to, when you're in stat mode, shift seven gives you distra, 
this menu pops up, one, two, three, or four. You don't have to worry about four. P, Q, and R we're interested in. If you hit P and then a number, it will give you that Z value and all the way down. So basically what the table is giving you. If you hit Q, it's going to give you the Z value to the middle, to zero. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. And for number three, R is giving you that value and above. Now that is very handy. So um, you might want to still check your table that you're correct if you do have time, but this calculator function really simplifies the looking up of the probabilities from the table. Just to also to note, uh, when you do this, sometimes the answer to the fourth decimal place is different from the table. As long as you round your answer to three significant figures, three decimal places, when you're using the calculator value, you'll be right.